So now that we've looked at an initial view of what roots are, which are of course plant organs, we're going to now look at the specific types of root systems. So we'll entitle this next flowchart Plant Organs 2 as we continue our discussion on the anatomical organs found in plants and then we'll specifically look at root systems. So roots, which are which is the sort of organ that we focused on in the last video, can be found in one of two systems. Those two systems are as follows. A root can be part of a tap root system. So there will be some plants with a tap root system, and then also there will be some plants with a fibrous root system. So we'll do these one by one, and now we have an understanding of the two types. So fibrous root systems versus the tap root systems. Here in the tap root systems, what we're going to see are some general characteristics as follows. This is going to usually be seen in a tall plant, and that tall plant will be uh, something with a large shoot mass. So if we remember, shoot of the plant is anything above ground. So anything that has a lot of stuff above ground, a large shoot mass, something like something that has lots of leaves, let's say, will probably have a taproot system. Think big trees. Okay. Furthermore, if we look at the term taproot and sort of figure out what it really means in terms of definition, a taproot is going to be seen or defined as one main root. Uh, one main, let me, I would rather say one main vertical root. I think that's a good term to use here. One main vertical root growing down into the ground. So this is kind of weird, growing down into the ground. You always think of growing as sort of upwards, right? But here we actually have this sort of inverse type of growing. And this inverse type of growing is because this taproot originally develops from the primary root. And if the primary root continues to develop, develops, let me say, from primary root, if that primary root continues to develop successfully, it will eventually turn into a strong taproot system. Now, one thing to note about the taproot is that because of this sort of structure that it possesses and function that it possesses, it's not actually going to be a root that's going to be used for absorption. That's not its primary goal, and it's not even sort of a side function that happens. So its absorptive capabilities are pretty low. But what is its real function? Its true function lies in support. So function is support. Definitely, definitely critical in the support of this plant. Because the taproot is going to keep the plant from falling over. So let's write that down as keeps plant from falling over, that's always good. If you're not falling over, that means you're definitely able to get some light, some sunlight, which is very important as a plant. And furthermore, because the plant's not falling over and has this strong foundation, it allows the plant to be tall, the taproot. So if a plant has a taproot, it can be tall, it won't fall over as a result of that tallness, let's say. And overall, this function will provide a generally taller plant and if you have a generally taller plant, that plant will generally get more light. And if you generally get more light, you get more energy. And you probably see where this is going. If you get more energy, that means you are capable of doing more photosynthesis. And that means you will be very, very happy as a plant. More photosynthesis, more energy, more light, all due to tallness. Why are you tall? Tap root system, of course. In addition, the taproot system can also uh, be for storage. So it's a good storage uh, mechanism and component. And taproot systems are going to be mainly found in dicots. Mainly dicots. And dicots, or eudicots, whatever you want to call it, are those that have two embryonic leaves that are called cotyledons, as we covered before, within the seed. So we're definitely looking at a seeded plant. What type of seeded plant? one that has two embryonic leaves, dicots. So let's look at the fibrous root system. Here, what's going to happen is a little bit different, actually. We actually have a different sort of structure and function overall in this other system of roots. Here, what we consider is that the fibrous root system resembles a thick mat, and it's a thick mat of much more slender roots. So we're not looking at one big, hefty structure. 
we're looking at many slender roots that lay out this sort of mat structure. Now, this mat structure is going to be also spread out, and it's going to be spread out in a way that it's well sort of dispersed beneath the soil surface. And you can already see the sort of differences, and that's going to lead to different function overall. So spread out beneath the soil surface. Um, an interesting component about the fibrous root system is the fact that here, over here, we had the development from the primary root. Here, what actually happens is that the primary root actually dies. Primary root dies early in the development of a fibrous root system plant, so early in DEV for development. And this means that if the primary root dies, it cannot develop into a taproot, right? So we'll say that this structure, this plant, doesn't, because of the depth of the primary root, turn into a taproot system. It doesn't turn into taproot. And if you don't turn into taproot, by default, you will have a fibrous root system. Notice the word fibrous. Why are we fibrous? Spread out, thick mat. Makes sense, that terminology there. Now, the fibrous root system uh, is also going to be sort of this idea that small roots, already a big difference from here, small roots are going to emerge from the stem. So they're not emerging from this primary, uh, this primary root structure. They're emerging from the stem. So let me rewrite stem. That was bad. There we go. From stem. And because of this, we actually term this something different. These roots are going to be called adventitious roots. Adventitious roots. That's the term for anything that's of a fibrous root system nature. What does this mean when you're adventitious? This means you are usually, uh, you are growing from an unusual source. Growing from, developing from, an unusual source. What's our unusual source here? The stem, of course. The stem is going to be sort of a weird origin for this type of root system, but nonetheless, it's still seen widespread. And so the stem, even though it's a completely separate organ than the root, it's what's causing the root system to develop from it. So you have this completely separate organ structure creating a completely separate organ system. So it's a very different a way to look at the root systems of these plants. So we have these two major types. And then of course, if this is mainly dicots, this is actually gonna be mainly in, in um, the monocots. Okay, so this is gonna be those that have one embryonic leaf uh, in that very young stage as a seed. So again, both are found in seeded plants, definitely. Difference is dicots and monocots here. And that covers our root system. Uh, as we see, the overall organ of interest is the root, and the root can be distributed in these two different systemic ways and components.